The gospel writer comes to us in 2 Chronicles uh, 7 and 14, and NIV said, if my people, look at your neighbor, say my people, who are called by my name, NIV says will, King James says shall, will or shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then what I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. The Lord blessed me some years back to minister from this one scripture and took me four Sundays to do it because the Holy Spirit gave it to me in four different passages in four different areas to humble, uh, uh, to pray, to seek, and to turn is how he gave it to me. Question is, in the passage of scripture, who is the gospel writing about if my people? If my people, us, the children of Israel, the, 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 the Israelite, the church of today, we are God's chosen people of today. So if God is talking to his chosen, his anointed, his appointed, his call, his blessed and highly favored, uh, 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 been down one time, I'm back up. If God is talking to you and I, that's something we need to do. We might ought to take heed. We might ought to uh, pull, pull up our bootstraps. We might ought to in tune our ear, incline our ear to hear, thus said the Lord. And in this passage of Scripture, he asked that we do four things. One, two, three, four. Those things are humble, to be humble, or humility. He asked that we pray. He asked that we seek. And he asked that we do a turn. So the four things that he asked us to do. First, to be humble, uh, 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 the spirit of humility. I heard an old preacher say one time, if the preacher's preaching, they step on your toe, you say, ouch. So I know I'm not talking to anybody in the audience and anybody live streaming. But, 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 the, but the scripture says to be, the first thing we need to do is to be humble. Before we can accomplish anything for God, we must first be humble. My mom used to say, no big eyes and little U's. And as a child growing up, I didn't always understand what big eyes and little U's was. But I found out that some people don't think that the party started until they get there. Some people think that Pastor Bun can't preach unless I'm on my seat. Some people think that the lights in the church sometimes can't be on if I don't pay my, my tithes and my offering. And even with that, we do it when it's convenient to us. So I know sometimes there's a lot of big eyes in, in, in the community. There's a lot of big eyes, even in churches, where my great-granddaddy name is on the corner. My daddy's name is on the corner. So we have these big eyes that want to tell God or want to tell the man or woman of God how to preach or how to minister. Now, this is not in my notes, but it just dropped down. It says, woe unto you if you preach not the gospel. Brother Tim, I've had a few sleepless nights leading up to today. Because sometimes we get a message or a word. And sometimes I feel like maybe it's, it's, a, it's a hard word, it's a hard message. Or sometimes I feel like I'm fussing. But I can find it between Genesis and Revelations. If I can find it in there, then I'm good. Amen. Amen. First, we must remain humble. We must become humble. No big eyes and little use. We must recognize that it ain't about us. It's not about your income. It's not about the, 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 the uh, I grew up in a small town and the railroad tracks split the town in half. It, it's not about what side of the tracks that you live on. It's not about the alphabets that you have before or, 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 or after your name, but it's all about him. It's not about us. We are servants of the most high God and that we must put uh, uh, we was put on earth to glorify him, to glorify God and not ourselves. All things were created by him and for his glory. According to Colossians 1 and 6. That's not Mike 1 or 1. According to Colossians 1 and 6. What things, what does it mean to be humble? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what does it mean to be humble? If we open up Merriam-Webster Dictionary, could they place a picture of you beside the word humble? Hmm. Arsenio Hall, this just dropped down too. Arsenio Hall used to have a late talk show. He would say, um, uh, oh, I just had a senior moment. I forgot what he would say. But, but it, he, he, he would say, he would say like, like, think on that or, or something to ponder on. Uh, Mama used to say, 
Uh, y- y'all hear me say reference all the time. Thank God I was blessed that I had both parents growing up. Uh, my mom is 85. My dad is thus going on. He showed us by example. When she was in the house, she showed us by, by love and, and by what she said and did. So she would always say, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Didn't necessarily know what it meant then, but as you get older, you learn. So what does it mean to be humble, to be not proud or arrogant? Not proud or arrogant. I remember as a a young boy growing up, a teenager, when we started to look at girls, if there was a girl who thought that her hair was prettier than everybody, she thought she was prettier than everybody, she would walk around, she would almost be like this. If it rained, she would drown because her nose was so high up in the air. And I'm not saying, young lady, there could have been some guys too, but not being proud or not being arrogant. There are six things that God hates, and the first thing is a proud look. Again, that's between Genesis and Revelations, I'm just saying. So what does it mean to be humble, not to be proud or or, or to be arrogant, Uh, that proud look? To be modest, having a feeling of insignificance, inferiority, subservience. A, a subservient attitude, a lowly. You can still be someone important, but yet you can still be have these characteristics to be insignificant, to be inferior, to be subservient. I found that the greatest leaders are the ones who's not who who are willing to get their hands dirty. We have one here. When we get back to normal, whatever normal is on our Wednesday nights, and we have dinner over in the, in the cafeteria, you see the first lady back in the kitchen sweating with everybody else. With an apron on, with like everybody else. We, we understand what her title, we understand her position, but yet God came not to be worshipped, but to do what? But to serve. And if you have a problem with, with, with servitude, uh, God will sometimes uh, uh, put you in check. I'm speaking from experience. I was complaining one time about uh, having to take trash out out of the fellowship hall after a function or after a cooking or after whatever we might have had at church. And then when it came around to appointing new positions or, or new uh, uh, departments for different things, guess who got placed on the cleanup committee? I said, okay, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. I'll do what you asked me to do. So not only do, are we to be humble, and I'm not going to church on all these because I want to move on. The second thing he asked us to do is pray. Luke, the great physician, write to us in the 18th chapter and first verse that men are to do what? Men are to always pray and not faint. And I, I heard a comedian say this one time, you can get something from anything if you're listening hard enough or for the right thing. He said, if you're going to pray, don't worry. But if you're going to worry, don't pray. They're they, 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 they going to they gonna cancel themselves out. So, so, so the second thing we want to do is, is to pray. Men are always pray and not faint. God hears the prayer of the humble. When we're humble, then we can pray the way we were designed. When we're humble, we can pray the way we created. Uh, uh, when we pray, we can tell God, God, you're Lord, you're sovereign, you're king. You're my wheel in the middle of the wheel. You're, you're my bright and morning star. You, you're my way out of no way. You're this, you're that, you're, you're, you're bag of chip, you're, 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 you're that strawberry shake. Lord, you're everything that I need when you come to him in the spirit of humility. When you come to him that you realize the sun don't rise and shine because you got up. When you come to him in, in that spirit, you don't have to be lying prostrate before him. You can be riding down your road, riding down the road, R-O-A-D. And something can rise up in your spirit and you realize how good he has been to you. And you just say, Lord, I thank you. If you don't know, now you know I cried just a little bit. That's all right. There was somebody in the God's good book that cried all the time. So if they can cry, I can cry. I stuttered a little bit. If I get excited, Sister CJ, my words get a little crossed up. I'm a southern boy. I, that, that's okay. That's part of my characteristic. He used the greatest man, one of the greatest men in the Bible, to deliver it to his people. And he had a what? A stuttering issue because I feel like I'm in good company. So we want to be humble. We want to pray. And when we pray, we can come before God in the, in the, in the attitude and in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the way that we should. And I'm, I'm going to throw this in. This just dropped in. 
I ministered one Sunday morning at a, at a, at a church, and it was sort of customary that, I won't say customary, a lot of times the, the, the saints would come up and they say, great word, a good word, or, or I, 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 I enjoyed the word, or uh, preach, or whatever. They just come up to, to, to congratulate you, come up to encourage you. And as I was getting my books and everything together, a young gentleman came up and that was visiting. It seemed like he was just on a mission. And I was preparing to be greeted in a, uh, 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 in a godly manner. And he commenced to telling me everything that I, I was and I wasn't, should have done, and should not have done, and why he should have been there, but this, that, and the other. So when I left, I left really heavy. I left really heavy. I told my wife, I said, baby, I'm ready to go. Let's go. I got in the car before my family got in the car, and we went home at that time. There was this room I had in my office, and it, all it was just simultaneously. I, I started to cry. I started to wail. And I just ended up on the floor because my heart was heavy. My spirit, man, was hurting. And it's saying, God, you need to sicken me. I said, God, forgive me if I miss you. Forgive me if I didn't say it and do like you asked me to say I do. Forgive me if I got the wrong sign. Forgive me if, if I came a short. Forgive me if I got in the flesh. Forgive me whatever I might have done. And I don't know how long I was there in his presence. But I just laid on the floor crying to God because what I had received, it didn't feel good to the spiritual man. It didn't feel good to the flesh. But God, if I was wrong, show me where I was wrong and help me where I was wrong. Then when I got done working on me, I said, oh God, bless him. Lord, order himself. Lord, whatever his agenda, whatever his itinerary might have been, Lord, help him to see you better. So I started to pray for the gentleman. But that was a, 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 a time where I just humbled myself before God. I didn't have nowhere else to go. I couldn't cast it on anybody else, so I just went to God. Just as a, as a child would go to his, his earthly father. I just went to God and said, Lord, God, you just got to help me with this. And God being God, he continued to lead me and guide me and help me to be what he want me to be. Amen. Amen. When I read you the, the, the lyrics to the song and when I read you the Second Chronicles, the two, the passages of Scripture, what one thing that both of those readings have in common? I want to make a change. Pray, hum, or seek, and turn. Both readings that I read, the one common denominator that they both had was change. C-H-A-N-G-E. We must change the man in the mirror. We must change the man in the mirror. Man, mankind. Why is it so hard for us sometimes to change? I realize when I just look around, our hair colors are different. Our hair textures are different. Our amount of hair is different. Sometimes if your hair is a little bit browner, a little bit blacker, you're a little bit younger, so you're more, it's easier, you're more a little acceptable to change. But when your hair becomes a little thin, when your hair becomes a little gray, a little blue, or, 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 or short, or start to back up, you've been so uh, focused and set in doing things a certain way, and change is a little bit easier. So I got a couple of people now, so, 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 so I'll talk to this side over here. So, 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 so change is it, something you got to adjust from what you used to do. I saw... Um, done of a Brian earlier the day that I thought, and I don't see him now, but I think I might need to be changed or adjusted just a little bit because I get a little old sharpness in my, in my leg, and I might need to have my back adjusted a little bit. So I realized that this body is not 18 or 25 anymore. It's not 165 anymore. So sometimes we have to know ourselves uh, 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 outwardly and inwardly to know that when we need to change things a little bit. And change is not easy. 
Change is not easy. Why? Because we have to take a look at ourselves according to the song. The scriptures say we have to humble ourselves. It also says we need to turn from our ways. And I almost said turn from my wicked ways. Now, 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 I'm not fussing, I'm not beating, I'm not hammering on the church. But the scripture is, 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 is to the church. He said, if my people, so he's not talking to the world. He's talking to the, the few, the chosen, the, those that, that, he pulled, that he pulled out of. He's talking to those that when you uh, 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 let you know how I grew up. My mama would open a, a bag of dry beans. She would put them on the countertop, and she would go through and wreck out those that's good and those that's, that's bad. So, 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 so if you're here tonight, I believe that you were those that was good that he raked to the side. That's who he's talking to. I'm going to give you another example. Some of y'all missed that. I'm from the country. Uh, uh, we, we grew up on fresh purple whole peas, fresh cream peas. And before mama cooked those to serve, she put them all in a pot of water. And she turned up the heat. And what the heat did, it caused all that drop, all that stuff that wasn't any good to do what to rise to the top. Then she'll scrape it off. Then she'll pour them out. Then she'll rinse them again. Then she'll put them in another pot and turn up the heat. Then everything else. Would, so after pouring everything that wasn't any good, it has been all scraped off. So everything that's good, that's who God is talking to. So if you're one of those people that the call the chosen to set apart, he's talking to us. So we must humble ourselves. We must turn from our old ways. Pray and seek his face. Because if we don't do that, we're not going to make a difference. If we don't do that, we're not going to make a difference. What do the words say about change? 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, therefore, if any man, mankind, be in Christ, he is what? He is a new creature or a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. See, I, I, I like that passage of Scripture. And the, way I, and the way I try to demonstrate, the way I try to explain it, physically, it's the same hands, the same feet, the same mouth, the same head. But when you become new, you don't go where you used to go anymore. You don't dabble in those things you used to dabble in. Your taste buds all of a sudden become a little change. Some of us got saved over, uh, 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 instantaneously, and all that stuff that, that, that the body, desi- that the flesh desired, you got rid of it. Some of that stuff you have to work on. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. This walk with Christ is a process. It's a process. Because every now and then the devil raises his head up with the same message, but the presentation is a little bit different. So you have to adjust to what the devil is trying to do. So what did the Bible say about change? If you're a new creature, creature, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says it's a time and a season for everything under the heavens. We're in a time and a season right now that none of us, I don't think, has seen in our lifetime. Romans 12 and 2, the, the latter part of that, the first part of that, and be not conformed to this world, but ye be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. All those things uh, uh, has to do with change. And you know where the mind say the feet will go. Where the mind lead, the feet will go. Why is it so hard to change? Sometimes it might cost us something. I mean, something costs us something, a lot of times we, we don't want to give up that. Whether, whether it's that comfortability or, or, or whether it's, well, this is not a day that we normally pray, so I'm not going to go. It just don't work with my schedule. We got to give up something. We got to learn something new. Well, why do they want to do it like that? Well, this still works. That still works. The flesh, this I think this is the main thing. I should put two stars by this. The flesh this natural man, sometimes you got to take a back seat. And that natural man doesn't always want to take a back seat. Why? Because it feels good doing just like I'm doing. Just don't, don't move my cheese. Don't, 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 don't rock my boat. I'm all right. As the kids say nine days, daddy, I'm good. God, I'm good. I don't need you to change anything. My income, I got everything just like I want it. Like they said, I got everything just like I want it. No. God has, but sometimes we have to change. I came up with an acronym for the word change, and I ministered this uh, some years back, change, C-H-A-N-G-E. If you live long enough, as mama say, boy, keep living. 
If you live long enough, you're going to understand that with change, there's going to be some challenges. Challenges sometimes going to stretch you. Challenges sometimes going to cause you to fall on your face. Challenges sometimes going to cause you to do something that, Lord, I don't know uh, 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 what you're doing, but I, I, I got to change. I got to make it happen. Along with challenges come hardships. I got to do this. This budget is here, but this is all that I got. So, God, you got to stretch. God, you got to multiply. God, you got to cause increase. God, you got to make a way out of no way. Challenges, hardship, and anxiety. The word tells us to be, not, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by what? Prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. And I like that and thanksgiving because when things is hard, sometimes we don't want to be thankful for it. But, Lord, I thank you for the rain, the sun, and, Lord, I thank you for the wind and the hell. Lord, I thank you for the ups, and, Lord, I thank you for the downs. So be anxious for nothing but with prayer and supplication. Let your requests be made known unto God. Challenges, hardships, anxiety, negativity, or naysayers. That's probably one of our toughest areas that we have to deal with when it comes to changes, negativity, and naysayers. Naysayers is not Johnny that live across the street, but maybe it's Bob that's in your home, or Sally that's sleep next to you, uh, brother, shake your hand that's in the worship with you. It's easy to, 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 to uh, uh, push aside naysayer or negativity from people you don't know. But Sister Deborah, when, it, when it's somebody that's close to you, when somebody you sort of hold to a, a different standard, and they're not uh, 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 locked arms on, which it's a little hard to sometimes to digest that. So, so, so you have to, so you start to question yourself, like I said earlier, Lord, did, did I hear from you? Lord, is that really from you? Because especially if somebody is negative saying something to you, and, and you feel like they're, they're more, uh, um, more spiritual, or maybe been saved longer than you, it's really hard to, 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 to receive what they're giving, uh, uh, and it's not lined up with what you feel like what the Word is saying, what God is saying. And with every change, there ought to be some goals. We should tell all our kids, all our grandkids, reach for the moon. If you fall short, you land among the stars. But shoot for something. Go for something. But even with goals, there should be some expectation. Don't, 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 don't try to go out and do all this and do all that, and you really know in your heart you can't reach that goal. Uh, Pastor Bruce was talking a while ago, asked me, did I know how to play the piano? I think it was. No, I asked him, was he going to do praise and worship? He asked me, did I play the keyboards? We knew then that our goals and expectation wasn't going to happen. So he went on down and I went on down. But you have to understand that when there's change, when God calls you to do something, all of these good things are going to come into place. You're going to have some challenges, you're going to have some, uh, some hardships, and there's going to be some anxiety. And there's going to be some negativity or naysayers. But with all our goals, we have to have some type of expectation. That's change. When we look back at our subject for tonight, Man in the mirror. You know, when um, I'm asked to teach or to minister, whatever it is that I'm doing, uh, the Lord will sometimes give me a, a subject, or uh, he'll give me a situation, or he'll give me a passage of scripture. And along the course of the way, he'll drop me little nuggets, and I just sort of put them in my nugget sack. And then when the Holy Spirit says, okay, we're ready, I'll sit down and, and, and I'll pull them out. So when I was asked to minister to tonight, this is not about what I heard last week, what I heard this morning. It's something, I'm not going to say stewing on, because when you're stewing on something, to me, when you're stewing, that means you're just hot and you're mad and you just, you, you're not hearing clearly. But I just believe I've just been gaining some nuggets or grabbing some nuggets uh, that would come my way. So if I got a lot that I'm throwing at you, that's, that's why I just had some nuggets coming along the way. When we look back at our scripture, or our subject, man in the mirror, what is a mirror? Merriam-Webster defined mirror as a polished or a smooth surface as of glass that forms images by reflection. Anything that gives a true image of a person or a thing it was considered as a mirror or considered as a reflection. Uh, you have to excuse my turquoise, my teal mirror. 
I have our ladies in my house, and I love them. So if you got a problem, don't take it out with them. Take it out with me. But when I look at the mirror, what I see looking back at me is a true outward reflection of who I am on the outside. From my head to my toe, I realize that I'm not 18, 165, uh, 5'8 anymore. I realize the curl that I used to have, I don't have anymore. I realize the, the size 42 I used to wear, I don't wear anymore. I realize the 32 that I used to wear, I don't wear anymore. So when you look back at a mirror, it gives you the true reflection, or even a picture, give you the true reflection of who you are on the outside, from head to toe, front or back, side to side. However you want to look at it, that's what the man in the mirror is. That's the true reflection of who we are. It shows the outward appearance. It shows our flaws. It shows our good points. It shows our bad points. Uh, 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 um, the things that's not so good. But what you see is what you get. I wrote here, pictures and mirrors do not lie. Pictures and mirrors do not lie, for they reflect what's in front of them. But as I was meditating, I realized that mirrors do not reflect what's in my heart. They don't reflect my thoughts. They don't reflect my attitude. Though our face expressions and sometimes be smiling, don't you know people can be hurt and tore up inside, and they got a smile on their face? So mirror doesn't reflect if I'm angry. It doesn't reflect if I have angry issues. It doesn't reflect if I'm in love. It doesn't reflect if, 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 I, if I'm draw, if, if I'm tired. It doesn't re reflect if I'm frustrated. It doesn't reflect if I'm in a state of depression. It doesn't reflect sadness. It doesn't reflect, reflect greed, lust, or hatred. It only reflects the outer man. It only reflects this, what you see in the natural. I heard somebody say one time, all dressed up and on our way to hell. Are we all dressed up and on the way to a devil's hell? Hebrews 1 and 3, the NIV said, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, all of him. New Living Translation said, the sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character, expresses the very character of God. Now, people tell me I'm a lot like my dad and we look like this, that, and the other, but I don't think I quite express his being. I don't think I quite express his character. And the Christian Standard Bible Translation said, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact expression of his nature. So we're looking at the radiance, so we're looking at exact representation. We're looking at character of God, and we're looking at uh, 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 the nature of God. The Son and the Father is one. The passage script talking about, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. When people look at you, not in the mirror, but when they see you on the street, when you walk into a room, what do they see? What are you radiating? Is your, or are your uh, countenance, is it welcoming? Or does it cause people to want to, to be standoffish? So as believers, so as, so, so as born again believers, so as Christians, uh, or as saints of the most high, high God, the man in the mirror is simply a true reflection of who we are. Excuse me. The man in the mirror is simply a true reflection of what we are, but not who we are. My wife and I have been married almost 28 years. And when I was courting her, we was whining to turn whining and dining, and I, and I thought I was getting to know her. And still, sometimes now, I learn something a little bit different about her. She learned a little bit something different about, about, about me. Sometimes circumstances or situations might cause us to change a little bit, but we have to adjust with that change. We have to be willing to work together as time goes on. So who, who are we as believers? What do we radiate? Who do we radiate? We must first understand what the term radiate or uh, uh, radiance mean. Merriam-Webster again uh, uh, defines radiate as to proceed in 
a direct line from or towards a center. Radiance, a type of glowing either from a light source like a sun or a heavenly or a healthy beaming person. An inward, outward glow. A inward, outward glow. When you walk into the room, do they say something different about her? Something different about him. I don't think there's any ladies in the audience that's, 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 that's pregnant, that's expecting a child. When you look at a lady that's pregnant, either showing that present, say, girl, you sure is glowing. Are you sure look different? Are you sure look different? Ever what side, however you want to say it. But something about a woman with child, like that there's a glowing on her face. That they're, they're just an illumination about her. There's something different about her in the room. You find somebody that's in love, like when they walk, their feet don't even hit the floor. But there's a glow and there, 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 there's something that radiates from them because they're in a state that's going from the inside out. And you notice that when a child is, you can debate about this at the church, but right now, a child received in love and a person that is in love, so it's love that radiates out. So if you're in Christ, it's the, the, the love that Christ has, the, the love that we have for Christ, that should radiate out of our being. So when we walk into a room or we walk into a situation, there be, should be something. Not saying that we're going to be, have the glow like Moses had when he was in God's presence, but there be, should be something about a born-again believer from time to time to let somebody know it's something different about them. So Christ is the radiance of God's glory and the express image of the Father. The word that we use, character, is a, uh, the, the express image is from a single Greek word that we get the word character from. Uh, one theologian described what the express image is. If you remember, if you had kids or grandkids, sometimes you get a little old, uh, a canister, uh, a Play-Doh, a clay dough, and it has a little stamp in it. If you take that stamp and hit it on a clay dough, the impression that's on that dough, uh, 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 whatever it is you're stamping, is the same image or the same impression as on that stamp. Think about it. You don't really have to press hard. You don't really have to press soft. But once you stamp that clay with that, with that, that, that disc or whatever, that, that impression is the identical or the exact representation or expression of that stamp. So what are you saying, preacher? Somebody said, preacher, what are you saying? Thank you. In order for us to be the exact expression of, 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 of Christ, sometimes we have to come in contact with Christ. We got to come in contact with him. It won't make any sense if I told Sister Dance and said, baby, I love you, I love you, I love you. And she's in one bedroom, I'm in another bedroom. If I never hold her hand, if I never scratch her back, if I never rub her feet. After a while, my expression of love is out the window. But in order to show that expression of love, there's going to have to be some physical contact somewhere. You can have that stamp and you can have that clay. If they never come together, you never get that expression. So how do we as believers get that expression? We got to make contact. We got to get close to the Father. We got to spend time in his presence. I call it you got to be intimate with the Lord. You got to find your closet, whether uh, uh, I'm telling off my mama. My mom's closet is in the bathroom. My closet sometimes just round down the road with the radio off because you can't hear if everything else is going around. Sometimes you just got to be you and God. You know, I love fishing. I like fishing with, with people. Sometimes I like fishing, Pastor Bruce, by myself because it's just you and Father Nature. Yeah, I know they say Mother Nature, but I hadn't read anywhere Mother made anything, but Father Nature, he created it. So I sometimes I like to be just a me and God. So I can hear what he's saying to me. And I'm not, not just pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, but I'm just like, okay, Lord. I don't know, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. And that yes, Lord, sometimes is hard because he's going to require you to do something that you really don't want to do. Are you going to say or go somewhere that you really don't want, what's something you really don't want to say, somewhere you don't, really don't want to go, but we got to come in contact with him. In the natural, we must keep adding wood. How do we as believers make that type of uh, impression we got to come in contact? 
again, Luke, the great physician, write to us in chapter 18 that we are always pray and not faint to receive God's gift and to receive God's qualities and to get his stamp of approval, to get the stamp of his character, uh, it requires us spending time in his presence. In the natural, if we want to keep a wood ablaze, we want to keep a wood glowing, we have to do what? We have to put more coals, we have to put more wood on the fire. And right now, what we're going through in our society, in our world, we need to be shoveling wood and coal. Uh, hey, what have you got to do to get it glowing? What do we have to do to, 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 to get us back or get you and I back to where we need to be? We need to do it. How do we do that? Thank you for asking. I call it the three Ds. This is something that God gave me in the early part of this, this message of the preparation. There are three things we need to do. Die, do, dedicate. Look at your neighbor and say, die, do, dedicate. Die to self. See, that's part of that change again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We got to die to self. We got to die to that person that's looking back at us in the mirror. Galatians 2 and 20. I am crucified with Christ, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. That radiance, that glory, when you walk in, ooh, it's something different about him. Ooh, it's something different about her. And sometimes if we've been recharged, sometimes we, we, we might start to glow or radiate again. I just want to share this with you. Also, thank you, Holy Spirit. Back when, when, when everything was being shut down, we were coming here for prayer, and several of us was uh, uh, designated just sort of throughout the, the sanctuary praying, and we were just all praying. And I thought about this other day when Pastor Bunn talked about he was at uh, Shambach's office. He just laid in the presence where, where a great man of God had been, and he just could still feel the presence of God in that place. But when we was in here praying, and we asked us to come and stand on the Green State's border. I want to sometimes take people and just push them to the front. Because to me, if that place is designated as a holy place, it's a little bit different than back there. But what I'm saying is, as, Sister Deborah, as long as I was praying, I was, I was praying, I, I, was, I was in God's presence. But when I came up here, I started walking from here to over there on the Green State's border. My level of worship, my level of praise when here, I couldn't control it. I was yelling, I was weeping and wailing. But it's like it was a, a more sacred, a more holy place. I don't know if it was uh, 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 dash, dash with all of what, but my worship took me to a different area when I got closer to his presence. So maybe they, they might bless somebody out there. I don't know. I just want to share that with you. But we must die. Paul said, I die daily. Paul was on a mission. Every day he put his life in danger to spread the gospel. Do, do unto others. Sometimes we got to serve. Luke 6, 31, to, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. We talk all the time about good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Whatever you sow is going to come back to you. If you sow love, you're going to receive more love. If you show discord, you're going to receive more discord. If you show confusion or hate, guess what? You're going to receive double confusion and hate. But if you show understanding and patience, humility, you receive that back. Dedicate. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you. I looked up the word beseech one time because I didn't know what it meant. I urge, or I beg you, brethren, that by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's how we keep that glow. That's how we stay closer to God. That's how we want to keep our, our radiance going. We got to do those three Ds. Do, die, and delicate, and dedicate. 753, we're about to close. As we go to our closing, I wrote down, food for thought. As we examine ourselves in the mirror, as we uh, go before God to say, Lord, here I am. Help me to be more of what you would have me to be. 
Help me to be more like you. I wrote down some things that I just pondered on during this time that was just in my spirit. And at times I began to weep. At times I began to, I never should get confused. I'm like, Lord, what's, what's happening? And if my people is not talking to the world, it's talking to us, the body of Christ. So as we go to close, food for thought, I have about six or seven points. I ministered one time a, 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 a message, and it was toddled. If everybody was just like me, what kind of church would my church be? If everybody was just like me, what kind of church would my church be? What are you representing? How do you represent the lover of our soul, the one who paid a debt that he didn't owe because we owed a debt that we, that we couldn't pay? If everybody was just like me, if everybody in new life was just like me, what kind of church would this church be? Replace my name with your name. If everybody was just like you, what kind of church would my church be? Minister Kim Hill was recognized Sunday for being licensed with the Church of God, and she has a Facebook um, teaching that she do live at 545. And I was flipping through Facebook on um, Monday, and she was on, I think it was 546, and she was talking about an old uh, lesson, an old teaching that she had done, and it was entitled, What's in Your Storage? Not what's in your shed, what's in your shop, what's in your garage, but what's in your storage? What's in your heart? What, what's, what's, what's in you? What's in your man? What's in your person? Have we ever thought to examine ourselves and see what's in us? I believe that what's in you, what's in us, will come out. We are what we eat naturally and spiritually. What kind of fruit, fruit are you producing? What's in your storage? And she continued to talk about another message, and she was talking about herself and her mouth, how her mouth would get her in trouble. And she said, I had to go back to the song that Michael Jackson sang, The Man in the Mirror, and I got excited because I had not had a confirmation about what I was teaching on until she started to, to exam, expound on The Man in the Mirror, how she had to get herself right, how she had to, to, to tweak some things in her life, how she had to tweak some things in her walk. So when she said that, I said, well, thank you, Jesus. I felt good then. When COVID-19 settles and we get to our new normal, we're going to lose some folks that were saved and gain some that was lost. The Bible says, now I might, I might be paraphrasing it different. The Bible says, everybody says, Lord, the Lord is not going to enter. But this time has been a testing time. So if you don't have some oil in your lamp, if you don't have uh, 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 some, old, some, some old wood on your fire, if you're just a flicker, you're going to allow the, the, the situation in life to go through and just blow it out. But we're going to lose some that was here and gain some that wasn't. Will we be ready? Growing up, we used to go to uh, one of the churches there in town. We would go and, and sing all the time. There was a lady there named, all I know was Sister Birdie. I was a little bitty boy with my family. We, we would go there and sing. And Sister Birdie was over at the Similar to God Church. And Sister Birdie was just, just full of the word, just, just full of power. She was just, just awesome. And I just remember her being a little bitty lady. And, and she was singing this song. And I, and I don't know if it's a, a, a something, she, I believe it's something she wrote because I haven't heard it since. But the lyrics to the song is, that's what's the matter 
with the church today. The church folks standing in the sinner's way. That's what's the matter with the church today. That's what's the matter with the church today. That's what's the matter with the church today. The church folks standing in the sinner's way. I was 10 or 12 years old. And I thought it was the brothers of the church standing out, not allowing the, the drunks and all the other folks to come into the church. But are we liking that radiation? Are we liking that glow that the world say, well, if they're going to do that, I can just stay out there where I am. Will religion, politics, and Facebook keep us out of heaven? Will religion, politics, and Facebooks, Facebook cause us to miss heaven and end up in hell? I've been a user of Facebook less than two years, and I understand why I never got it. I start to read, and I just flip through it. I start to read it, or I turn my phone over. I expect the world to be the world. When Sister Daphne and I have a problem at home, y'all don't know it because we don't air it out. When the church is having a problem, why air it on Facebook? I won't say I get sick and tired. But it bothers me when I'm scrolling through Facebook. Everybody got an opinion. Everybody got something to say. And I wrote down here because it came in my spirit. It's asking us, do we have a seared conscience? We will repost and we will share anything. Just because you're big enough and bad enough to do it don't mean that it's right. We're religion, politics, and Facebook. I don't know about Twitter and all the other ones because I don't have them. I did good to get Facebook. Will it cause us to miss the mark? Why run the race and you get to the finish line and you get disqualified? That's another message. There are two sides to every story. There are two sides to every story. I found out that when I walk into a house and they got that pink towel in the bathroom, I think Pepto be small. And they think mid modern century. Two sides to a story. So what I do, I learn to keep my mouth zipped because what they like and what they see won't be the necessary the same thing, what I like and what I see. It's 802. Y'all bear with me just a second. Everybody protesting ain't robbing and burning down the place. Somebody's doing something positive. But we allow the media, we allow to see what we want to see. They robbing, they burning, they stealing again. But what about the protest right before that? To wear or not to wear? To be or not to be? That is the question. I have teenagers at home. We sit down like adults and talk about the world that we live in. Do y'all know how a 16, 15, 14, and 13 year olds see the world today? Do you know how they view the church? They are leaders of tomorrow. But what kind of examples are we setting? I'm just asking. Two sides of every story. I was in a phone conversation with Sister Paula Cofer earlier today. And we just text back and forth just a little bit. 
And an old song came up in my spirit. And it took me to some of the posts that I see from some members of New Life. We got some folks that's hurting. We got some folks that just want to just don't call me, don't text me, don't, don't, don't pray for me. I'm good. Leave me alone. And sometimes when we've been so pushed by, 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 by what's going on around us, sometimes we'll put other little four-letter words in the, in, the, in, in the phrase. Are we just too blind to see, as Michael said, I turned up the collar on my favorite winner's coat. Who am I to be blind pretending not to see the need? Who am I to be blind to see what's going on? Who am I to be blind that everything is all right with me and my fool and no more? As long as my lights is on, as long as there's food in my cupboard, as long as there's bathroom tissue in my bathroom, I'm fine. But someone out there is hurting. And we don't have anybody to turn to. What are they going to do? This old song that rose up in my heart, Sister Onella. And if I could sing it, God knows I would sing it. But it says like a ship. That's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and their fury falls on me. I wonder what I've done. I wonder what I've done to make this race so hard to run. See, whenever you get to the point where you wonder what you've done to cause this race to be hard to run, at some point, I believe you took a look at yourself in the mirror. This is when I started getting excited. The bird said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Then I say to my soul, so take courage. The Lord will make a way somehow. The teacher's journey may not be easy. You not say it would be. You did not say it would be. Sometimes I get so lonely and disheartened, and I just don't want to be bothered. Then I begin to think, Lord, what have I done to make this race so hard for me to run? Then I say to my soul, soul, take courage. The Lord will make a way somehow. If you're out there listening on live stream, if you're here, here today, we just pray that something was said and done that just blessed you. And just know that the Lord will make a way somehow. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity. Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Lord, we just pray that we brought you glory, that we brought you honor, that we brought you praise. Forgive me, Father God, if I said or done anything, Father God, that's outside of your will. But Father God, all we want to do is just to praise you, to bless you, to exalt you, to bring you glory, to bring you honor. Father God, thank you for this place. Thank you, Father God, that we sit it high on a hill. And Father God calls us to radiate from this pace, from this post, from this position, that we might call the dying world to come running to these doors, seeking and asking, what must I do to be saved? Father God, as we leave your place, but not this presence. As we leave the place, but not your presence, go before us. Keep us from our hurt, harm, danger, sin, and unseen until we meet again. May all the glory, the honor, and the praise be yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, God bless you.